Welcome. My name is Quentin. I am the general manager here at FSI, better known as Functional Solutions International. Welcome to our Smart Suite version 4.1 launch party. It has been an absolute awesome experience getting to this uh, place of release, if you like, um, getting this product to market. We're so excited that um, it has just run like wildfire amongst all of our users. Um, we're really, really glad to hear some of the, uh, the stories that you're already sending through from the last 24 hours of how SmartSuite version 4 has just been an absolute game changer for you in your library. So today, we're gonna to be talking all things SmartSuite version 4.1. We're gonna talk about how it got started, and we're going to talk about um, what it is and how it is going to be the future of libraries as we know it. So let's kick it back to where it all started, right? So and, uh, about two years ago, two and a half years ago, we started um, the concepts and designs of 4.1. We had to make sure that this was going to really be a release that was focused around end client because we've done so many upgrades already for the administrators, new circulation, new stock take, new reporting, new catalog, and all those features. So we had to make sure that this one was gonna be really, really snazzy to bring our students in and captivate them into the library space. So we were going through and doing a little bit of research and some of the things that we started seeing was that whether we liked it or not, engagement in libraries has been slowing down. Uh, many librarians, as a result, uh, sorry, many libraries, as a result, um, were losing teacher librarian time. Those teacher librarians were getting pulled away from the library space and were getting put back into the libraries. As a result of that, you know, those library lessons that we were getting, well, they weren't happening anymore. And it was just this perpetual cycle. So we need the librarians out to teach, but there's no one to actually go in and teach library. So the engagement has just been dropping off and dropping off and dropping off. Well, what does that mean for us? Well, we sat down as a research and development team and we said, okay, we, we really need to figure out how to bring back the excitement into the library space. And I tell you what, we looked everywhere we had a look at every single platform out there even things like uh, apps that hyundai were bringing out for, you know to make it easier for us to service our cars uh, we looked absolutely everywhere um, and one thing that we kind of um, were able to pull away from looking at all these platforms not just in the education space but everywhere that we touch with on a daily basis is they had one thing in common and that was community. The ability to create community within a space uh, really, really sought to bring a higher level of engagement with those apps. So we thought, okay, well, how are we going to do that within a library management system? Um, one of those um, platforms that you know we started looking at um, was obviously all of our social media platforms. And the common denominator that all of those platforms had was the ability for an individual user, whether they are part of a community or not, uh, to have their own space and to have their own ownership uh, and control and shareability and to build and to connect with other users within inside that ecosystem. So that was really a revelation for us because if our students and our teachers and even us are experiencing that on a day-to-day -day level with all these platforms that we're engaging with, and then we have a, a library system that's not allowing us to, to do the same thing, how are, are we going to connect? It's either gonna be on the same level or it's gonna be even better than what I'm getting on a day-to-day -day basis. So that was a big question um, in our minds. And we dove really, really deep into this and we started having a look at social media platforms globally and how they are engaging with their clients, which are people like you, you and me and our students. 
Um, and having a look at it, we found out through the research that social media as a, a market and industry takes in or took in over $230 billion US dollars uh, back in 2022. And they're projecting that it's going to surpass 300 US billion by 2024. And that's literally just people jumping on and scrolling through Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or X, um, as it's now known. Um, so it's a massive industry. And when you think about it, all we're doing is we're just scrolling and absorbing information. You know, whether it's fact-checked or not, it's still information that we are absorbing as individuals. Something that the library should be doing, where we should be able to absorb that information that's been curated by our library managers and pulled in, not just, you know, everyone that's out there in, in um, on the World Wide Web. And going through and having a look at this in a bit more detail, we had a look at um, a number of industry stats and the average working aged social user, and this blew my mind, spends just a little bit over two and a half hours per day scrolling through social media. Now that's 40% of a school day that majority of people out there are scrolling mindlessly through uh, social media. And according to a study connect, uh, conducted by the National Institute of Medicine in the US, and this is gonna blow your minds, school-aged students are spending three and, uh, between three and five hours per day on social media. And of that subsection that they um, you know, analyzed, there was 15% of those subjects that spent over five hours on social media every day. Now these are kids grabbing their phones, scrolling for five hours a day aimlessly, TikToking, all that sort of stuff. So we went back to the drawing boards and we thought, okay, well, if that's what we're competing with, how can we bring back into the library space the excitement of digital resources, physical resources, video resources, community? How can we do that with what we're going to um, develop with our new version? Um, and it kind of brought us back to a framework that we had to work with. We had to bring kids back into a space that was safe um, and not just a real, you know, a virtual reality. It had to be somewhere that they could tangibly go into and pick resources if the digital resource, resources weren't enough. We needed something that drove community against st uh, students and teachers. So not divided them, but brought them together and connected them. Um, repositioned libraries at the center of schools, as well as um, you know, once we get all of that coming together, ultimately bringing the library over to the students. Okay, so that was a really, really um, big drive for us with the uh, release of version 4.5. And I really believe that we have done that very, very, very well with this um, release. So without further ado, So, 4.1, here we are. 
Uh, we're gonna go through some of the big features and functions of 4.1 today, but I just wanted to remind everyone that this session is not a pre-recorded session, it is live. I'm standing in our office in Brisbane. Uh, so we're based headquarters out of Melbourne. We've got a um, satellite office here in Brisbane. Sunny Brisbane, I had to turn the air conditioner on because I was starting to get a bit hot. Um, but if you guys have any feedback or comments, chuck it into the chat. I want to hear from you. I want to be able to um, you know, bounce things backwards and forwards with everyone that's joining us today. So feel free to even just say, hey, it's, um, it's Mary, I'm online. How's it going? I'd love to hear from you. Okay, so the first thing um, that we kind of went back to the drawing board and said, okay, we need to engage students. We need to um, make the library the, the center of a school environment. We need to bring the library back out to the students was the design of the of the application. It had to be something that is going to um, be simple and easy, but modern and attractive as well. So we've done that with, um, with SmartSuite version 4.1. A lot of you had seen some of the big changes that came with 4.0, the new menu system, the new um, homepage editor, and we've just blown that up even more with our new um, 4.1 search pages okay so very very modern very crisp very clean and there's a whole bunch of extra um, features and functions that are on the screen now which I'll go through in a few more moments um, but one of the big things on top of all of that is that we've actually brought all of our search screens into the one so everyone would be familiar that FSI owns and runs TV for Education. Well, instead of having separate pages for your library search and your TV for Education search, it's now part of the one system. So no longer are you having to jump over to the TV for Ed search screen for teachers, then come back to the school's collection to watch it, and then jump over to the student search if you're a student trying to find material. It's all now available on the one screen. And then if you want to connect um, to Smart Lessons, if you wanted to connect with Wikipedia or the Gutenberg Project or EBSCO or Worldbook or any of your other subscriptions, it's all really crisp and clean and simple and it's just on the screen. You don't have to keep re-executing searches. Just like previous versions with the federated search work, you put one search term in and it automatically searches all those other databases for you, but it's nice and clean on the system. Sorry, I'm just catching up on my notes here. Hey, Donald, um, our customer service manager is joining with us. Um, Leanne Stevens, Christine, Brad, good to see you, Brad. Uh, and I had a conversation in uh, yesterday, I think it was. Um, so I'm glad to see you here, Brad, as well. So one, yeah, one of the big things is obviously bringing it all into that one space. So if you now want to be able to share one URL with your students and say, hey here's where you find all your resources. Well, you can do that. You don't have to worry that they have to go to one page for Fed Search, one page for school, one page for TV for Ed. Okay, we want the ability for um, students to be able to access information wherever they are, okay? So with TikTok and YouTube and all of those other systems that we know through statistical analysis, they're spending between three and five hours a day on. We needed to be able to captivate them with the SmartSuite version 4.1 system as well. Now, these kids that are accessing all of those platforms are not accessing it on a desktop. They're accessing it on a mobile phone or an iPad or a tablet. They're accessing it on the go. So one of the items that we really had to think very hard, and we've done this with all of our platforms, but we had to take it to the next level, was making sure that SmartSuite version 4.1 runs natively on every single device that's out there. Now, a lot of questions always keep coming up. When are you guys gonna release an app? Well, we don't need to. The whole premise of an app is to run a light version of the application so that you can um, format it nicely on a mobile device. So if you ever jumped onto your banking apps, you'll be able to transfer money and pay people, but if you needed to access some of your backend system settings, 
you have to go over to your desktop and you have to make the changes there. Same with your streaming services. You can stream, you can add things to your favorites and you can do all that sort of stuff. But if you needed to go in and add another user or you wanted to change your credit card details or anything like that, where does it go? It redirects you back to a desktop. Now we didn't want to have that same experience because what happens if a, a student wanted to use that function but they weren't at a computer. They wanted to access it on their mobile phone. So every single screen that you see within SmartSuite can be used natively on a mobile phone. And we've put the technology into it to make sure that if you're accessing it on a small computer, it will look just as beautiful as if you were looking at it on a large desktop. And it will look identical if you're using it on a mobile phone. Um, the buttons, the sizes, everything has been specifically designed to work across all of those physical devices that are out there. So you don't have to worry that I need to install apps with SmartSuite version 4.1. Um, I need to you know, have a particular um, landscape or portrait view if I'm putting the iPads on the side of the library shelves. 4.1 has taken it the next level and make sure that you don't need to worry about running apps you can see everything through the web client. Um, so it's really, really native for your kids. And if we're trying to tackle that issue of getting information to them, well, it's literally just a URL. They hit a URL, log in, and off they go. They're within the platform. Okay, but we can't just have a system that looks better, but does the same thing that it did before, right? So what else? is in this new version that we've been harping on about for quite a while, okay? One of the big things that every single user um, has been blown away by um, that has taken on this upgrade in the last 24 hours is the fact that as soon as they open up their collection, every single book or majority of their books had been given a rating Okay, now these ratings is one of the smart suite intelligent innovations known as the smart network. The smart network brings your library together with all of your colleagues and students from around Australia to bring you a fuller, more intelligent experience. The smart network is dotted around 4.1 in every little area and every little screen to help your teachers and your students and your library clients, whether that's um, for our private users um, or our corporate users, it's for them as well um, to get an experience they are used to with so many of the other platforms, but we've never had in libraries before. So coming back to ratings, we can see that when we open up a book and I'm just going to click on a random book here okay there's no actual reviews on this book but over on the on the search page we can see that it's been given two out of five stars so where are these stars coming from is the system just gone and randomly assigned star ratings to them or you know, is it something that's a little bit smarter? Well, obviously with SmartSuite, it's gotta be a little bit smarter. So what we've done is, um, we've connected your collection with all the other collections from around Australia. And if that particular item is a really popular book with all of our users, we've run a whole bunch of algorithms that then goes and assigns a star rating to that title. If it is a book that isn't really read very frequently um, or um, it's a new book that's just come out and we're still waiting for um, the, the ratings to build, then the system will show that as well. And the whole thing behind this is, if I can see that there's, as a user, if I can see that there's a couple of items there that are really popular that have ratings on it, I'm gonna be more inclined to click on them. And you'll know this yourself, as you've been scrolling through Google, as you've been scrolling through uh, even Google Play and Netflix, and they have you know different likes and that sort of stuff, 
you're more inclined to click on a resource that has peer reviewed um, ratings then you uh, that are higher than you would be to another item or title that isn't rated at all or has a lower rating. So that's what we're trying to do. And it, what it means is that at your school, if that particular book hasn't really been borrowed all too well, but it's a really popular book with all the year sevens across Australia in WA, well, your library is gonna benefit from all of their um, borrowings and loans. And the vice versa, if you've got a particular title, a textbook maybe, that's really highly borrowed with all of your teachers, well then that is going to be represented on their collection as well. So we've got this community aspect happening where you don't really have to do anything, you don't have to click a button, you don't have to manage anything. In the background, Smart Suite's working it, uh, Smart Suite is working its intelligence to really smash home and try and start promoting more and more of your content without you having to do anything about it. Okay. Now, with the ratings, right, we've got um, another section to the system. So if your kids are logging onto the system and they're searching for books, well, they're going to start seeing that they have the ability to review the items. So as they go and look up a book and they scroll down, as your users start reviewing the items, number one, it's going to start affecting that global rating that's appearing on the search results. So if you don't have any ratings on your collection, then we refer to the smart network but if your users start reviewing the books, your local uh, reviews start prioritizing and there's algorithms that run that will start affecting that search results review, okay? Now, as a student, if I've read this book, I've now got the ability to go in and write a review myself. Okay, and they can give it a rating. And what happens here is when we go back to what we were talking about before about giving the ability to users um, to have a particular area within the system that they can take ownership of, um, this is one of those aspects. So they can start building into your library and saying, hey, I've left a whole bunch of reviews on this system and I wanna know, you know if I can add some more. So let's go and read some more books and just give my opinion out there. And what that does, and just from the research that we've done with some of these other systems, the ability for someone to share their information and have their own space encourages and engages them to come back a second, third, fourth time. So we've given you that ability with SmartSuite version 4.1. Um, when those students leave their reviews, they then have that little space and it affects the overall reviews that happen on your search results. Okay, but if we left it there, it wouldn't be a smart system, right? It'd be the same system that all the other library management systems have that's out there. Okay, so with the reviews, one of the big things that everyone kind of worries about um, is our students that aren't so well uh, restrained, if you liked, okay? Um, and that's the students that are gonna come into your system and go, give it one star and post that out to everyone, okay? Now, before you saw that when I posted, this is an awesome book, I love the storyline, it threw that reviews directly onto the uh, system for us, okay? But the minute that I said something that had a little bit of profanity in it, the system popped up a little message and said, thank you for your review. It has, had, it has been submitted before being published. Now what happens is on the administrator side, and remember that I'm logged in as an administrator, it's flagged that and highlighted it in red for me. 
it hides it from the public view from everybody else. So you are not going to be able to get through the system and leave profanities without being called and checked on. All right. So as an administrator, you don't have to worry that you've got a whole bunch of kids in year 11 and they are just you know, buffed, so to speak, and they're going to start leaving all these silly reviews all around your system. The system is going to take care of it. And we've implemented a, a framework called EduSafe, which is dotted around the entire SmartSuite ecosystem, which protects you from things like um, profanities being published to your system. Um, but there's also other parts of that framework that look at things like bullying of students and protection of um, information and personal um, data. Okay, so that's all part of this framework that FSI has actually written. Um, we will be publishing that um, to the market soon so that other vendors will be able to take advantage of it. Um, but it's all written and built into uh, SmartSuite version 4.1. So what it does is there is a whole bunch of flags and a whole bunch of algorithms that are running and building and learning as we go. And if it identifies any of these things that need to be dealt with, it's going to flag it for the administrator. So profanities, it's not gonna get out there. Bullying, it's not gonna get out there. Um, and there's a whole bunch of checks and balances that it does. So there is an over, overall management console specifically for the review uh, rating and review system that administrators can go to and have a look at all the reviews and manage all the reviews that are within the system but each time you as an admin come you also have the ability to go well this has been flagged by the system and that's not appropriate or you might say i know this kid and he just he he has a good thought but he can't express it well so i'm going to edit it for them And then I'm going to publish that for him. Okay, so it gives you the, the authority to be able to do that. And those rights and reviews will also go over to a new user role called the res uh, review manager. So if you wanted to elevate your uh, teachers, your head of department for English to also have those rights, then um, you'll be able to... Um, it elevate them as well okay so pretty fantastic um natalie kerry betty thanks for coming along and joining us today um i'll get over to you, uh, some of your questions in a moment um with regards to the reviews okay so we know that number one the search results are showing those ratings to help encourage users to jump in and have a look at some of those books even though they may not be books that are highly borrowed in your library, they're very popular amongst year sevens across Australia. And we're gonna highlight that to them. Then when your users go in and they start having a look in finer details, they leave reviews, that's also going to affect that overall review for the book. Now we also know that um, when we leave those reviews and students have the ability at the drop of a hat to just go in and leave a review on a book, that you don't have to worry that you're gonna have junk coming out on your public system. It's gonna be protected by SmartSuite and that EduSafe framework that we have designed, okay? But again, if we stop there, we wouldn't be SmartSuite, we would be Smarter Switch, okay? Because the other library systems out there, they, I think, allow reviews or they allow you to give a thumbs up um, and I would imagine that that have some kind of reporting system where users can report other users' comments and that sort of stuff, okay? But we take it that next level. Now, if we go back to that conversation we were having at the very beginning, which is the one thing that we kind of took away and said, well, this is something that's really engaging our, um, our users to other platforms. And it's that sense of, community right so how are we going to do that with smart suite well we can sit down with people and we say let's have you know reading books and all that sort of stuff and and try and orchestrate something or we could try and be a little bit more organic and let people jump in and experience them 
this community themselves. So what we've done with SmartSuite version four is we've piggybacked off the back of the review system. And we've gone, all right, as a user, I'm going through and I'm having a look at all these people who are at my school and reviewing this particular book, which I'm interested in. How am I going to be able to see what else that they've reviewed? Because I'm looking at their review and I think, you know what, I agree with that. I wonder what else this person has been reviewing. Well, if I click on their name, it will take me to that individual individual's reviewer profile. And I can see all this information about them, all the books that they have reviewed, people that they are following. And from here, if I look at that and go, hmm, uh, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I like what Mary Jane's written about that. Let me click on that and have a look at that particular book. Let's check if it's available. Let's check if there's a video version that's available from the system and I'll get back to that in one minute. Um, so if I click on that, I can then go down and have a look at all the other views. Okay, and we can see here that there is someone that has put a review up there. So I can go and I can report that. Okay, or as an administrator, I can delete that directly from the system. Okay, but what this allows me to do is as your users start jumping in and reviewing the system, I now start going down this rabbit hole of, I started looking for a particular uh, topic or title. I had a look at this particular uh, review uh, stream and I clicked on Mary Jane. From there, I then found a different title. Okay, I'll open that up and I'll have a look at its reviews. And from here, I might say, well, I've read this book actually. I remember now looking at the reviews. So how about I go and see what else is on this author? And I click on that and all of a sudden, I'm now looking at all the books that have been written by this author. So we're not just relying on your metadata within the system. We're now looking at all this extra data that our library students and teachers are bringing back into the system as well. But we don't just leave it there. If I'm looking at these reviews and I think, you know what, this person here, I like his review, let's go and check out their review profile, right? I look at his review profile and I see a whole bunch of books that he's been reviewing and I think, yeah, I kind of, I'm on the same path as him. Well, let's follow him. So now my profile is following Michael Fernandez. And each time Michael Fernandez leaves a review, the system will give me a notification when I log in and I'll be able to go and check it out. Michael has just reviewed three new books. I go in and it might be three new books that I never would have dreamed of looking at, but because one of my friends who I'm following has reviewed it, I've got notification by the system. And you can start seeing how this is going to just permeate out because we're not just relying on librarians and teacher librarians time in order to get information out to our clients. We're actually relying on our users as well and piggybacking off them. So whenever as a user, I wanna be able to look for anything within the system, I've got the ability to use the search and find books on different topics and use the rating or I can head over to my profile. And in my profile, I've got recommendations and all this other stuff, but I've got a friends section. And in here, I have the ability to see all the people who are following me and all the people that I am following, just like some of these social platforms that are out there today, right? So my goal and objective organically, because I've been used to it with uh, things like Twitter and Facebook, is I wanna get my profile to be followed by lots of people at my school. Now, the way that I'm gonna do that is by leaving a bigger footprint. So just like the influencers of today on these you know, 
social media platforms, I need to read a book and I need to review it. I need to review a book and I need to review it. I'm going to then start building up all this data where I can go in and review to make my profile stand out amongst all the other students and all the other teachers at my school. And organically, we're gonna start seeing more and more of these students jumping on. Um, as a individual within the platform, if someone says, hey, um, I saw your profile on SmartSuite, but you know I can't remember how to get to it, well, I can log in from any device and I can click on share my profile. And that's gonna give me a URL, which I can then email or I can um, send it via AirDrop to that other person. And as soon as they do that, they're going to be able to open up my review profile and hit the follow button. And instantly they're gonna be connected with me. So we're starting to build this community and it doesn't have to just rely on students to students. If we've got English teachers that are jumping on and leaving some really, really cool reviews, as an English teacher, why wouldn't you wanna share your reviewer profile with your students and say, hey, if you're interested in some reads, I've got a, a reviewer profile. Um, all you need to do is follow me. All the books that I'm reading, I've got captions on it so you'll know which ones are for you know best for year nines and year tens. Just jump in and have a look. And we can levy our English teachers and our math teachers and our geography teachers to pull those kids back into the library and spending three hours, dare we say, going and looking at information on SmartSuite rather than being out in the ecosystem of Facebook and Twitter where you know we've got 30 second videos of people doing who knows what, okay? And spending all that time scrolling mind numbing content for no reason. So we're now putting all that return on investment back into your library because we're promoting the resources and the time that you've spent with your system, okay? So, Massive, massive, massive um, changes to the shift and the thinking of SmartSuite because it's no longer let's put data in and expect clients to come to us. We're now thinking in terms of, hey, let's open this up and start having this community of users coming and looking at that content. Okay, so that's where that community aspect and the reason why we are smart suite is because we're building all of that um, logic into everything that's happening. Now, I keep talking about these recommendations, right? So as users are using the system, we've got the smart network, which is building those um, ratings at the beginning of your search results, which are then affected every time someone goes and leaves a review. Okay, we then have the ability to go and follow users and be followed by other users. And then every time we open up a book, on the right hand side, we're seeing a whole bunch of recommendations that the system is putting out to us. And just like the reviews, this isn't just a static recommendation that the system has said, oh, okay, you're looking at this book and it's got these three subjects. Here's a whole bunch of other books that have the same subjects. Not even close to it. Using all of that information that that user has engaged with your platform on, we are recommending content for them. So if they've followed someone and that other person has a particular interest in um, subject X, um, and then these other people who are following me are interested in a few other different subjects, that forms the recommendations that we provide to your users. And if I'm looking at this particular book, so I go and do a search of volcanoes. I've just seen uh, some chats. I'll come back to that in a minute. OK, 
Okay, so let's say that we've looked up a, um, a, a book within our collection. Okay, the system goes, okay, well, I know Quentin, I know who he is, um, I know the people that he's following, I know the interest that he's got. So when we load this book, let's also show him a video ad adaptation of what he's looking at here because he's a person that seems to watch a lot more content than he is a someone that looks at books and borrows books. So I've done a search for volcanoes and I'm looking at this particular textbook that's in my library and the system has brought up a Four Corners video from TV for Education. It's brought up um, how, uh, a TED Talk or a um, partner video from TV Fred on how do you weigh volcanoes, Secrets of the Earth, Global Village. And then it said, well, I've recommended some documentaries and I've recommended some TV series and, and whatnot to you, but I'm also gonna recommend you some other books. And I'm looking at those books and going, it's not just gonna be on volcanoes because that means that if you're stuck in this little assignment circle, you're not gonna get anything else and you're not gonna come back to the system. So we're gonna have a look at volcanoes and recommend you extra books on volcanoes. We're also gonna have a look at year sevens across Australia and when they search for volcanoes, what they were looking at and if those books exist in your library, we'll recommend that to them. But then also all of your reviews. And if there's been three or four people who you're following and they have looked at books for volcanoes and then they started reading this novel, well, we're gonna recommend that to you as well. So all of a sudden, instead of having these dumb recommendations that are coming from systems based on subjects, we've got this ecosystem which is looking at everything about that individual and just like YouTube and Netflix and, and all these systems that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and appreciate the kind of content that they are putting in front of us, your library management system is now doing the same thing. And every time they open up a book, they might get a video recommendation. If they open up a video recommendation, and let's say that they ask a student that would tend to search TV for Education instead of the book library, well, every time they open up a video from TV for Education, and I'll do that same search, the system's gonna recommend them books from your library as well. So we don't have to worry that we're going to farm them off into the ether of the video collection. They're actually gonna be pulled back into your library and your physical resources as well. So if I open up this particular title here, we can see other videos that might relate to this particular topic, but those books from our library as well. And again, not just on this particular topic, um, uh, specifically but um, connecting my whole footprint within the system and recommending resources based off that okay so from there we then also have the ability to go well I don't know what I'm interested in if anyone uses Netflix you'll know that there's this um, a f feature of facility that says I don't know what to watch and based on your history with the system, what you've watched and what other people who are similar to you have watched, it then starts feeding you information. Well, SmartSuite 4.1 has that facility as well. Okay, so in everybody's personal favorites, uh, sorry, personal uh, profile, they have the recommendations. Okay, and these are built specifically for each individual user. So when they log in, they'll be able to see their friends and they'll be able to have a look at all the books that their friends have been borrowing and, and reviewing and they get notifications of that. But then they can head over to the recommendations tab. And this is where the system is going, okay, well, based on a whole bunch of different things, you're currently interested in the um, Hass subject. So here's some popular Hass videos from TV for Education and they will load. Then it will say, okay, you're in year seven. Well, other year sevens across Australia are really interested in these books and it will recommend that to them. Um, other administrators, so these are other librarians. Other librarians across Australia have been reading these books. They're within your security level and they're within your interest areas. Here's a few recommendations. So all of a sudden, instead of just relying on the individual librarian, recommending content we're now relying on all of us collectively and you are making an impact 
on not just your students, but students at schools across Australia and vice versa. Now, it's not going to be uh, you know, a direct correlation. We're not going to say, all right, this person over here and recommend all their books. There is a number of very, very um, intricate algorithms that are running to make sure that these connections that we're making with students and the recommendations are going to be such that it's going to increase the, the engagement and the borrowing and the literacy levels within your library. Now, give me one moment. I'm going to just quickly go through because I've seen all these chats and comments popping up. Um, Betty Summers, do administrators get an alert for silly reviews? So um, hopefully that was answered, um, Betty. Uh, we do definitely provide it through um, the rating and review management console. Uh, so instantly they will be hidden, so you don't need to worry that it's something that you have to jump in and deal with straight away. Uh, it's more along the lines of if you want to open it up and allow that review through, you then have to go into either the rating and review management module, or you have to open up the book information page and approve it directly from here. Um, Natalie, uh, Natalie's asked a question about the customization of the uh, search results page. Um, that's something that we will cover, Natalie, within our user group session that's happening in a couple of weeks. Donald, our customer service manager, is going to be sending a invitation out to all of our users to join. Um, and that's gonna be an open forum discussion. And we'll talk a little bit more about customization within the system. How do we do it now, okay? Um, Betty Summers again, with the recommendations, are they based on year level? Some of them are, okay? So um, I don't know if anyone has played with this thus far. One of the things that you'll notice is every time you come to the recommendations area here within my profile, which can be accessed over here, uh, these categories change. So they're not static. We are not a dumb system where what you get on day one, that's it, okay? The system is growing all the time. Our research and development department, they're looking at um, all the data analytically and they're going, all right, we've noticed that these particular types of searches and recommendations, they're doing really well within um, all of our users. Let's build more of them. So every week, these are changing and based on different political topics as well. So even on TV for Education, um, you'll notice now with everyone that uh, you have to register interest in, within the system directly out of the box, okay? Any political issues, any, um, you know, what's happening on Israel and all that sort of stuff. Um, obviously, we've got a big thing here in Australia with The Voice coming out. We are recommending content based on all of that and it's changing on a day-to-day -day basis. So not only is the system bringing and engaging users and using your students, but we as the authors and creators of the system are constantly building those profiles, okay? So when we're doing that, we are saying, all right, we believe that there is a whole bunch of users here that are really interested in cars and auto, auto mechanics. So let's recommend a whole bunch of content to them, okay? But in, those, uh, in that content that we're recommending, it's got a couple of books that potentially have been in your library rated as year 11s and 12s only. And I'm a year 10 student and I come to my profile. Well, that's not gonna show up because of the intelligence that's built in that says, whilst these books are relevant for your uh, recommendation, they're not available to you at your school. So let's hide them. Okay, and same goes, if it was a Top Gear episode that was rated M, well, we're not gonna recommend that to anyone that can't watch M within your system. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, there are some categories where we have actually specifically drawn out a year level or an audience group. So we will say, hey, other year sevens across Australia have been watching this, or because you watched this, other users who have also watched this in year eight have um, read these books 
okay? So we are definitely looking at um, user groups and recommending um, content based on year seven streams and year eight streams and year nine streams, but we're also going a bit more global as well. Um, you know, we wouldn't have the ability for uh, this category here, administrators, okay, which is our librarians. As a student, I look at that and go, hey, other librarians across Australia are recommending these books to me, okay, if we locked it down to year sevens and eights only. So we definitely have that EduSafe framework, which is going to protect my students from seeing content that they shouldn't, but we want to be able to use and recommend content that other users um, from different year levels, not just year sevens or eights, um, are benefiting from in other schools as well. Okay, I hope that answered your question. Um, with Brad, um, Brad's asked, can students choose not to be followed? Uh, so as part of the system at the moment, um, it's, it's an open thing. If you have a profile in the system, you've got the ability to be followed. Um, what we're seeing that if someone has an opinion about a book, the reason why they put that into the system is because they wanna tell the world about it, right? If they don't wanna be followed, it's because they don't have a footprint. So as a user, I can't search a user's profile. So unlike Facebook and Twitter and Instagram where I can jump on and I can do a search for Brad Owens or Donald Hobson Tom or Michael Fernandez, we can't do that with SmartSuite. It relies on that individual who owns the profile being able to, number one, share it by clicking the share profile icon or by putting a review into the system okay and what you will find that if they're putting a review out into the system it's because they want people to know about it okay and they want people to be able to follow them um, so that may change as we move through uh, the different versions of smart suite um, based on our you know, EduSafe framework, we might do a review and say, hey, that's something that we need to implement um, to give users the ability to leave reviews, but then not to be followed. Um, and that's going to be okay as well. But at the moment, Brad, um, that's not, not a thing. Okay. So looking at everything that the system does, sorry, one minute, I'm just having a quick look. Just looking at a, a conversation from Dorte here. How much do we as administrators have to do? <laughs> okay, Dorte, that is a fantastic question and I'm absolutely kicking myself in the backside for not making that very, very clear from the very, very beginning. Um, and I'm trying to talk and type at the same time, so I don't know why I typed cow, but we'll see what comes up. The short answer to that, Dorte, is absolutely nothing, okay? As long as your students are able to log into the system, okay? That is the one proviso for this ecosystem and the community aspect and everything else that the system has been designed to do um, can function, and it is giving the ability for your students to be able to log into the, the system. Once that happens, theoretically, you could sit back, okay? Because we've got the ability for SmartSuite to take care of all the reviews under the EduSafe framework, um, if you don't want to approve anything that's been flagged by the system because you have full faith in us, fine. You really don't have to do anything. The back end of it, it just operates itself, okay? If you wanted to do anything outside of the system to promote it, and that's things like having a chat to your library staff, uh, sorry, your English staff, and saying, when you guys read a book, jump onto the system and review it for me. And in your English class, tell your kids, this is my reviewer profile, follow me within SmartSuite, and anything I'm reading, you'll be able to see my review on those books. That's all. 
you don't have to do anything extra with 4.1. As a matter of fact, we're expecting that you will have to do a little bit less because the system is going to start recommending content to you and your students and your staff. Okay, it's all based around trying to alleviate roles that you do on a daily basis to give you more time to spend with the kids in a real world environment and get them out of these scrolling um, frames within uh, Twitter and Facebook and all that sort of stuff. Um, got another question from Leanne. Um, can we swap around the recommendation, uh, recommended videos and books on the search results? Okay, so what Leanne is talking about is at the moment, uh, whenever we open up a book, the videos, recommended videos from TV for Education are appearing at the top and then uh, the books are listed underneath that. Now, um, we have designed that specifically, Leanne, for this particular release. Um, and we've already got plans to make some changes to it in the future. But the reason behind it is we know for a fact um, that our students engage a hell of a lot quicker with a platform if it's got video content than if it's got book content that I have to physically walk into a library to get. Okay. So with that rationale in mind, and we're thinking about things like YouTube shorts, we're thinking about things like on Facebook, you know, we can scroll through reels and Instagram, we can scroll through reels. Just the very fact that we've got this silly thing called TikTok on the market now, where that's all it is, is just these 30 second videos and we can just scroll through five hours worth of them. Um, we have designed it to captivate the students back into the library space. So 4.1, is to really captivate and get your kids engaged with the collection. If they go to a particular uh, resource and they can see right at the top of the list, hey, there's a whole bunch of movies that I can see or documentaries or Attenborough um, TV series and they click on it, instantly they're going to go to TV for Education where they can watch it. But at the same time, it's also going to recommend the books to them from your library. Okay, and everything is interconnected. So even all the subjects that are on that particular video, when they click on them, it's gonna take them back to books within your library as well. So initially, we've promoted it there just to get that engagement. And then what's going to happen is those um, recommended profile, uh, sorry, recommended ribbons that we're seeing in the profile, they're gonna start shuffling down into that area. Okay, and in the user group session that we're gonna run in two weeks, um, you'll have a little bit more insight into the system settings area where we can control some of those recommendations a little bit better as well. So that's already available within the system. We're going to cover that um, in two weeks. And then um, once we uh, release the, the next kind of phase of 4.1, you'll start seeing that these categories won't just be static videos and books, even though there's a whole bunch of intelligence behind those ones. Um, it'll start saying things like, um, based on this book, um, other year sevens have also watched this content or looked at these books. So it'll filter it out and start connecting, you know, books and videos together rather than here's your videos and here's your books. Okay. Christine, um, I'd love to see more book trailers in TV for education. Something that the team have definitely been working on. Um, obviously, uh, with, with a collection like uh, TV for Education being 150,000 videos, um, we've got a lot of content that we have to curate every day. So it's just a matter of trying to get that stuff in. But we do have some very, very sneaky plans coming up and it's all tied around Smart Suite and that community aspect. So stay tuned for that. We're hoping to get that out in about six to 12 months. Um, but it is a very, very, very exciting thing that we're gonna be doing moving forward with Smart Suite. Okay. So um, with Smart Suite version 4.1, now today is all about the launch party. It's all about just getting an understanding of what on earth is 4.1. It's a new look and feel, okay, which is the same 
for everything. You know, we, we get a message on our phone that says there's a new update, we open it up and everything looks different. Okay, um, there's other software that we're using and it just looks different. Well, why does it look different? You know, most of the time they just do it because it needs to be modernized. Smart Suite version 4.1 has definitely been modernized. It looks crisp, it looks clean. We've got a whole bunch of features and functions that are um, making it easier from a, a library search point of view. Things like our live dynamic filters, um, which change by the way. So I'm on schools collection and it's currently showing me for this search, I've got 69 books, two compact discs, etc., etc., and I can filter based on that. But if I go over to TV for education, the same search of Cal has brought up all these um, programs on TV for Education. And instead of showing me what the media type is, because I know that it is TV for Education, it's saying, well, do you want to filter based on the channel? I want to see everything from 7 Digital that has something to do with Cal on it. Okay, so not just this user interface, there's all of this intelligence that's been thrown into the system. And it's not just been put in for the sake of doing something new. It's been put in because we had a conviction that libraries were losing their engagement levels. And we want to see libraries coming back into schools. We want to see um, librarians being you know, put into a place where they can be promoted by all the other um, teachers and deputies and business managers as well. And we believe that what we've done here, it's going to create an ecosystem where all of a sudden, instead of the library being looked at a physical location when we go to look at books, it becomes this place within our school as a community where educational resources are being shared, um, reviews are being um, shared by individual students and a voice is being given to them in a safe educational space, not just you know for no reason, okay? And that is why this release has taken so long because of all these things that we've been framing to make sure that we can um, deliver not only an awesome product to the market at a very affordable cost, um, but it's going to hit a number of very, very large strategic objectives to re-engage students and teachers and librarians and build that community together. Okay. So, that is um, that is Smart Suite version four point one. Um, we're really really excited that everyone has um, jumped on board already. Uh, we've got I think the last count was about sixty percent of our user base between Wednesday night at ten o'clock when we push the button. Uh, up until just before the session started have actually taken on 4.1. So that's uh, probably the biggest take up of any release that we've done to date. Okay, now in the past, um, everyone that's been with us for a long time would remember that we just pushed the button and you had it. Um, we've obviously changed that. Um, being such a big version, we wanted to give you guys the ability to make the decision and say, hey, we're ready for it now. Let's take it on. Um, next Tuesday because that's going to be the time where we don't have library classes and we can learn it a little bit ask questions of the customer service team um, but yeah it's just blown us away with how quickly everyone's taken it up so if you are an existing user with us my highest recommendation is to join us in a couple of weeks at that user group training session it's going to be hosted by myself and Donald our customer service manager we're gonna go into a bit more of the intricacies of the system, how to manage it, how to do um, those backend exclusions for the recommendations and that sort of stuff, um, as well as a bit more of an open discussion as to how in a real world environment are we going to be able to promote this to our kids and our teachers, okay? And we believe that we've got some really good ideas and concepts to that. Um, it's nothing that you really have to do within the system. It's literally just getting information out to your students, marketing the, the software to your community and getting them involved. And things like have a chat with your English department, get them to review the books and share the profile. It's as easy as that, okay? So to launch version 4.1, 
we do have a special competition for all of our users. So if we do have any um, new users coming on board this term, you guys are gonna be included uh, in it as well. Um, and the competition is like we've been seeing in the chat, hey, um, you know, do I have to do anything? No, you can sit back, you can have a coffee, and you can allow the system to organically build community throughout your um, students and teachers. And with that, we're going to give away $500 worth of coffee, whether it's beans or pods, um, or teas, to the winner of the term four competition. Okay, in summary, all you need to do is be the school that has the highest number of reviews from now until when the competition closes and you will win coffee, tea, pods, whatever it may be, $500 worth to sit in your library so that you can even invite some of those teachers in, sit down with them and say, hey, let's have a coffee and let me show you how the review system works and how you can share your profile. All you need to do is just share it with the kids, just get it out to them. Okay, so we are even trying to help you guys out with those ideas and concepts to just get the system out and re-engage um, your library at a different level, at a community level with um, your clientele. So that's um, launching. Jump on to our FSI uh, Facebook user group, um, which off the top of my head, I'm having a blank FSI user community, I think it's called. Um, it's available to connect from within your system. Okay, under support FSI user community. If you're on Facebook, join us over there. We'll have some open discussions. We'll create some conversations on how um, we can share this and then join us as well at the user group training session in a couple of weeks. Um, now, before we sign off for today, let's have a quick look. Um, so we've got some questions, some how-tos. Leanne, um, the ability to see who has the books on loan, it is definitely still in the system. Um, if you message our customer service team, um, actually, yeah, message our customer service team because I don't know if I've got any data to show it to you, um, but it's in the book information, okay? And it's right at the top of the screen. Um, you'll kick yourself for not seeing it, um, but it's definitely still in the system. Um, Natalie Rose will take that uh, question on notice. <laughs> and yes, yay for coffee. I'm definitely looking forward to one in a minute. Um, Betty Summers, um, we will definitely have a chat to you about um, you know getting your kids logons to the system. Um, we can control all the logins, so it is definitely something that we can um, we can do to help you get your community logged into the system. Uh, we're not just doing a straight one for one um, count either. So just to clear that up, uh, if we've got a school that's got 1300 kids and we've got another school that got 200 kids obviously you guys are going to be working a little bit harder to build your reviews up for the competition um, it is going to be on a ratio basis okay so if you've got um, a couple of schools I won't go into the algorithms or anything like that because in all honesty I've got no idea how it's all worked out but I just do, uh, know that all of the mathematicians that we have on staff and the uh, programmers that we have on staff have definitely designed a competition that is going to make it easy for everyone to be on the same level playing field. Okay, so with that, um, my name is Quinton. I really appreciate everybody coming along and joining me in the session today. As I said, it has been a very long time coming. Um, believe it or not, if there's anyone that has been with us since Smart Suite version one, chuck it in the comments and let us know. Um, on the day, the day that we uh, were releasing it, which was Wednesday this week, I was sitting with our R&D team just going through the final things and pulled out my phone just to you know have a bit of a scroll, which I shouldn't have in a meeting, but I did. And I had a, a memory come up on Google Photos. And I cannot believe it, 
but nine years ago to the day we were sitting in our first conception meeting for smart suite version one and on the very very same day nine years later we have now released version 4.1 a complete game changer future of libraries so that just blew me away um we are just so excited that we are finally here. I know that if anyone's been speaking with Eva, um, who's our operational manager, uh, she has just been pushing to get this out for you have no idea how long. She deals with everyone, uh, all of our librarians on a day-to-day -day basis, new customers, existing customers, um, and she knows how much this is going to help. So she is almost in tears with excitement. And um, so are all of we. So we're just really, really happy that we've got it to market and that we're going to start seeing you guys um, using it and building that community organically within your schools. So I'll just quickly check um, if there's any other questions. <laughs> no worries. Look, Betty, um, you know, if anyone hasn't seen the comments, Betty's saying um, thanks for my enthusiasm and passion. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you, it's been something that has been passed down from generations. So if you don't already know, our founder and CEO, Michael, is my dad. And I've been working with dad for almost 15 years now. And if you saw some of the things that he used to do back in the day with eLibrary and vLibrary and vKnowledge and TV for Education, and even, you know, lately, he's still demonstrating, he's still supporting our customers you can understand the passion that he has for education and the passion that he has for students and teachers. Um, there is a reason for that. I recommend everyone to jump onto our uh, YouTube channel and watch the video there. That'll give you an appreciation for it. And that has just been drilled down um, into myself and my sister and brother-in-law who's also working within the company as well. Um, so we are just you know, absolutely so excited to be able to get this out because we can really see a difference within the education space um, and you know working alongside and partnering with all of you guys giving us giving us some awesome feedback to be able to sit down and say okay well how can we overcome these issues so stay tuned there's going to be a lot more coming um, and uh, yeah we're really excited about it <laughs> Betty Summers films users <laughs> the the OGs the originals all right, so with that, again, I really want to just say a massive thank you to everyone. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Um, we wouldn't be able to bring these technologies and these opportunities to schools at the prices that we bring it to. Um, you know, that's something that we're very proud of, that we keep driving the market down and keeping it very competitive um, to, you know, to make sure that there is an opportunity for every student out there to access content, to access education, and to access it in a safe place so from the absolute bottom of our hearts thank you for everyone coming and joining into the session today looking forward to catching up with all of our users in a couple of weeks at the user group training session um, and to be able to push a couple of extra new things um, over the coming weeks as well so my name is quentin general manager here at fsi and uh, we're going to sign off today so thank you very much enjoy your weekend and to all of our customers I hope you win the coffee uh, promotion for this term and we'll see you in a few weeks.